When you're able to get out of the cities, if you are someone who lives in the city, when you're able to get out from the city, you lose that light pollution. And what you're able to do is capture some fantastic nighttime photos on the smartphones that manufacturers are making right now. And it's really impressive what comes out of your pocket. The problem that we generally have with the modern smartphone is the field of view is a little bit narrow. And what we want to capture is all that night sky. We want photos, well, we capture photos like this, but what we really want are photos that are like more like this. And you say, well, hold on a minute. I should be able to capture that big open wide sky because on this phone, on this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I've got three lenses on this. I've got the wide, which is what you shoot most of your stuff with. And I've got the ultra wide and you've got the telephoto, but the ultra wide, it should be able to capture some spectacular night skies. Well, you can capture some awesome night skies with it as it is right now. And during the daytime taking those ultra wide images, that's just perfectly fine. And it's all to do with the aperture that is in the back of that wide angle lens and the ultra wide angle lens. So the way we're going to do it is use a Sandmark ultra wide lens, the wide angle lens that Sandmark makes. And it's going to screw directly back onto the back of my phone here in this case. And we're going to open up the field of view really wide whilst maintaining that f1.6 aperture so we actually get more light and get more image and we end up with some really cool night photos of the starry sky. So let me explain this. So as I look down here, this is a, an irrigation channel. There's some old mates cows over here. There's a bit of a fire going on over here. He's just burning stuff off. It's nothing to be alarmed about. But down here, I think, and I'll check in a minute, but the Milky Way will rise up here and I should be able to get some good reflection through the top of the channel here on the water at night time. And if I look out here, open up the camera app, <coughs> Just using the regular one-time zoom, <clears throat> I'm going to put it roughly in that sort of orientation there, looking down the channel. I want some reflection in that water, but I'm not going to get a great deal of the air, of, of the sky. So if I go to the ultra-wide zoom, that's looking a lot better for what I want to achieve. But <clears throat> we know that the ultra-wide lens is not going to do too well at night time. The way that I know where the Milky Way will rise is photo pills. And I'm going to use the augmented reality in photo pills to find out how this photo will look. So at eight o'clock tonight, it's going to be sitting just above the channel there. And you can see it rises up into the sky and I want to capture more of that than what is available in the regular lens. Not only will we capture more light, we'll also get more field of view. This channel goes roughly east, the Milky Way is going to rise in a south east, east southeast sort of an orientation. There's a pretty good road over there that we're going to maybe get some traffic lights coming along the edge of. So the wider we get, the better the shot has potential to get. But more importantly for this sort of photo, we've got the water down below and the Milky Way rising behind it. The more water I get and the more Milky Way I get, the more of a mirror effect that we'll get in this sort of a photo. So this location is great. We'll definitely give this a go tonight. The wind's still hanging around a bit. It's pushed a lot of the cloud away. There was a fair bit of cloud around here today. You would have seen that. And so it's pushed a lot of that away, but unfortunately it's still a little bit up there. So we may not get spectacular sort of Milky Way galactic core photos, but we'll certainly get some stars and you'll certainly see what a wide angle lens put onto the iPhone 12 Pro Max can do to widen that field of view for nighttime photos. So we've got the phone sitting on a tripod, pointing out to where we looked at today, to where the galactic core is rising above this channel of water out here, and uh, we'll set up the photo. So what we're gonna do is go into night mode, touch on a star, go 30 seconds, and let it shoot for 30 seconds because it's on the tripod. Let's do that. That doesn't look too bad. You can see a bit of stars there. There's a bit of cloud, and the iPhone tends to add a little bit of haze to this sort of an image, so we'll edit that up in a minute. So here's the Sandmark lens, the wide angle lens, and we're going to throw this onto the camera now. Now the way that, if you get out there and you get a little bit confused because it's dark, and I've run enough of these workshops with people at night time to take photos of stars that people tend to forget where things are. And a good tip for this sort of a phone is if you don't know which one of those lenses, because it's side on or it's upside down or anything like that, if you don't know which one of these lenses is actually the regular wide lens that you normally use, put your finger over it. When everything turns dark, you know that's the one to put it on. I find, especially in the dark, when you're doing this sort of thing and you're playing with a bit of equipment that you're not used to using, like one of these lenses, the best tip I can give you is do it during the daytime first. At nighttime, 
I don't know what it is, but for some reason people tend to lose their faculties a little bit and you forget how to work your tripod and forget how to use your phone holder. And when you're not using something like an external lens on your phone very often, you forget how to do it as well. And it, it, trust me, do it a couple of times during the daytime and you'll thank me when you do. Let's take a photo with this wide angle lens and we'll see how we go. The process now for taking this photo, this nighttime photo, this 30 second is exactly the same as what we just did without the lens on there. So just go into the camera, go to photo, go to, because it's nighttime, it's dark enough, we hit the night mode button, touch on a star out there and that's going to focus this whole system on that star out there and hit the shutter button. We wait now for 30 seconds. I find that getting out of town and, and coming to a place like this where the skies are just so dark, there's something pretty special about that. There's no one around for miles. It's completely dark and we're taking photos of the stars with our phone. It's just crazy what you can do now. It's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. And when you're in a place like this, this is a Bortel 4 site, uh, as in the light pollution is very little and the skies are really, really dark. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. You can see stars on a clear night. You can see stars from one horizon to the other and that's that's sensational. And I absolutely love getting out here and taking photos of those stars with your phone. And what we're doing here now, that's finished taking that photo now. What we're doing now is uh, is just, well, it's, it's, it's up in the game just that little bit. Let's go and have a look at this photo. So I can see on this, there's a bit of cloud there. There's a bit of cloud out where that Milky Way, the galactic core is, and we're not going to capture it perfectly tonight, but we are going to see the difference this lens is going to make. Let me show you. So looking at this first photo, the first photo that we took here, you can see there's a little bit of cloud there. It is uh, it is what it is, guys. It's unusual for here to get any sort of cloud, but we've got a little bit there tonight, and, and looking at where the wind's blowing from, we're going to get more, so we're probably not gonna get much more out of it tonight. But um, what I am interested in to see is how much of a difference, how much more of that night sky we capture with this lens on there. So I think it's gonna be pretty good. I'm just gonna go into the photos here and have a, a quick look. There's the photo that I took first. And you can see the galactic core rising there and you can see that, that cloud on the horizon. Um, we can't do much about that, but that, that's, that's pretty typical of what I get out of the iPhone 12 Pro Max right now. And the next photo, that's the, that's the one with the wide angle lens with this lens on there using that same wide lens on the phone with this wide lens adapter from Sandmark on there. And you can see there, I've captured a lot more of the night sky. And if that cloud wasn't there, I suspect this would be even better. I'm really happy with what that's done. Absolutely worth doing this was. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. And uh, the guys over at Sandmark, I said, hey, I've got this idea. And they sent me this lens and it's paid off. I reckon that's, that's pretty bloody good. I think between using this and not using this in this situation, um, it's worthwhile using it, I think. I think we capture more of, more of the night sky still with that wider aperture uh, camera on the phone. And there's all sorts of reasons that you would use this sort of a lens on your phone like this. And Louis and Connor from Sandmark did a video about that, and I'll link it up the top there. And they, they made some very valid points in that with the distortions that you get on the regular ultra wide lens on this phone. Um, versus what you can do with this lens on this phone. And they make some very valid points. But when they got to lower light stuff, they didn't really cover um, the sort of night mode that you were going to use at ultra dark sort of settings when it's really, really dark like it is right now. And it's amazing what the phones can do right now. So I think if you're going to be out there taking photos of the stars on a reasonably regular basis, or even just dark environments on a reasonably regular basis, and there's a lot of it that you want to really emphasize, like what we've got here with massive night skies, I think it's worth investing in one of these. These are about a hundred bucks. They're not the cheapest thing, but I'm telling you now, they are built really, really well. I'm, I shoot a lot of Canon stuff, Nikon and Sony stuff, and, and I'm, I'm used to having high quality uh, glass to put on the front of my cameras. And this is up there, I'm telling you, it's built really, really well. The case that this comes on, that goes straight onto the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's a really well-built case. I'm not sure how well it would hold up to dropping it hard onto concrete from a reasonable height or anything like that. It's designed to carry those lenses on this phone. Um, so look, I think that setup as a total is, is 
it's worth the money. It's certainly not the uh, most expensive one of these sorts of lenses out there. I think uh, one of the other manufacturers do it for 130 odd dollars, and it's certainly not the cheapest one. There's heaps more cheap. And I'm telling you now, when I talk to people about buying uh, upgrades for their phones, for their proper, for their cameras, I should say, for their proper cameras, and I talk about any sort of glass that you put on the front of it, as in the lenses that you put on the front, spend the money there. Spend the money where it's worth it. You're not going to make a lot of difference taking your photos by putting a phone case on your camera on, on your phone to take good photos. It's not going to make any difference. And I can tell you now, when you buy cheap glass lenses, it's going to end up looking pretty cheap. This, I think you'll agree, looks pretty bloody good. Um, it's worth doing, guys. All right, I'm going to edit these up. I'll show you what they look like, and I'll see you later in the week. Catch you later.